Well, hey, I want to jump into looking at a session. So I believe you said that this is a session that Brandon Lake recorded live, and Luke Hendrickson was going to mix it, and somehow you got to be the middle guy, and you're going to open up the session, and we're going to talk about, um, yeah, well, just that process. How did you end up being the middle guy, and what things did you do? What things does Luke want to see from you? And I just think this is really fascinating and incredible that we can, you know, yeah, take yeah. a sneak peek at this. So I had done some stuff for Luke in the past. Most of it was vocal tuning, uh, work in Melodyne for stuff, whether he was mixing a church project and also in charge of doing some of that post work himself. He started outsourcing me um, a bit to do, to do that, and he was really happy with the work that I did. And also there was some stuff he did for Bethel as well, uh, little things they would decide to have him mix and I was involved with the post-production team uh, with some of that too so I'd gotten a little familiar with how he likes to receive sessions what he likes in there what he likes out and all that kind of stuff Um, which he's he's particular but he's particular for good reason I've come to find out yes (laughs) and so he was mixing the Brandon Lake album and they were pretty much just dumping you know the raw audio from the front of house console here you go luke uh do your thing and mix what songs we want you to mix from what nights and we'll make a live album and he came to me to he said hey can you do more than just vocal editing can you do you know how to time drums and that kind of stuff i said yeah i I know how to do that. I hadn't timed drums for Luke, so we kind of had to make sure we were on the same page with the approach to drum quantizing. What is there a different approach? What approach would you have taken, and what approach did you have to learn that Luke wanted? Thankfully, I was on the same page with him pretty much in every way because kind of the way that, that Bethel does things, Luke had such a say in developing that. <laughs> Anyways, but... Um, there are some, you have to decide what uh, drums to give priority to sometimes. So even though there's, you know, a transient of the, the Tom being a little early, um, and the rest of the kit kind of hit when the snare did this thing, or I'm trying to get a hypothetical, a useful scenario here, but I mean, maybe Ken, is this something we could even open up and. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Let me see if I can find something here. This is... This is so cool. Yeah, this is the... Okay, I will say it's it's nothing like... It's a completely raw session minus very small, small things. So I should say what I was in charge of for Luke was um, was prepping this... Creating the session and lining a couple things up, which I can explain before I get into some of the drum snapping. But one thing to know with a live album is you want to know if you're going to make your DAW click the king or the live click the king, which you're probably going to make the live click the king. But you have to know that the clocking of those two are going to be slightly different. So, you know, 108 BPM in Pro Tools might look a little different than the live like Ableton click that they were using on the night. And of you recording. can see right there, your 108 was 108 point, is it? Yeah, what's zero, the zero, point one zero? Six. Yep. Um, It's going to be slightly off like that. So what you have to do is engage this little uh, conductor track mode. Mm-hmm. If you make that engaged in Pro Tools, then you can create uh, kind of, here, let me, sorry, let me. And then do you do like the tab to, tab to transient? Yeah, that's right. Uh, and you can add these little warp markers, and then you can drag that warp marker left and right and move the Pro Tools grid around. So I would have to go to the live click and um, zoom in, um, zoom in all the way and make sure that it's pretty much right on the dot. Mm-hmm. Um, which it might, 
most now, of the did time. You, do you do it manually or, or do you do tab to transient? Oh, I, I, I do it manually, um, but not because that's a better way than doing tab to transient. But it's just kind of what I got into the habit of doing. And for people doing. who don't know, can you show them real quick? Can you turn on the tab to, and, and do that? Uh, go to slip mode. Yep. And then under, see like the magnifying glass? Let's see if um, up on the top. Yeah, yeah, not that one. Oh. It's one of those four. It might be like this, the one to the far left. So underneath it, see those other four go down a little bit? Yep, try that guy. Now zoom into your click. And then click somewhere before the... Oh, yeah, I see. And then press tab. And it'll jump to the top of the transient And it should there. drop to the top of the transient. <clears throat> yeah, so, I mean, one thing is... Where it put me is just a couple, it's like two samples a little early, so, um, maybe, than where I, I would have put it right there. This is so fascinating. So <laughs> so cool. <laughs> so maybe, and Pro Tools is great at detecting most of that stuff, but, you know. Yeah. As with all things, you might have to kind of manually check it anyways. And, and you know, right. no one's going to know if you're <laughs> two samples early and lining up your grid. <laughs> and then once you do the first few, it should, everything should snap, right? Yeah, pretty much. So, like, you'll see that the majority of the song, I didn't have to create another warp marker until the very end of the song. And it's still, it's still locked in. There are some live clicks that I've worked with seriously that were floating around like all the time, um, shorter and faster throughout the whole song. And so I had to really like get in there and keep Pro Tools grid like in sync with the live click. It's so strange, but for the most part, you won't need to do that. Um, and this particular session, their outro here, actually, can I check if this link is working here? Yeah, let's, let's hear it. I'll freeze you anyway. So they end this Hallelujah. and go straight into the next one. Let's go, Reno! So that in the transition of those two songs were so back to back, so we just kept them in the same Pro Tool session. Got it. So um, Luke didn't have to annoyingly like put them next to each other after the fact. Um, and then you went in, and what's the click difference between the first track and the second track? Just yeah, 108 curious. down to 70. And then there's a time signature change, too, because Graves into Garden is 6-8 mm -hmm. to 70. Um, now, which which song is this from which album? What are we listening to? Oh, yeah, this is... I, I opened up the session from It's Praise You Anywhere and Graves into Gardens, which I think are the first two tracks on his live album t from the... Uh, tear off the roof tour that he just put out at the time of this recording i think it just came out like last week or something um and then yeah, when so, you do this i see it, it's all pretty raw obviously you don't you're not doing anything to yeah. mix it but do you, you just keep it on i can't i i didn't have to do any i could have just for my own listening purpose to kind of go in right and, put some processing on i just didn't bother with it so because what luke had asked me to do is create the session line up the grid like I've just done and then uh, time the drums and tune the lead vocal, which uh, were the two kind of biggest editing tasks, I guess. But the rest of the bond, uh, sorry, the rest of the band quantization, I just left up to Luke to, to do quickly. And, but sure. what he would basically do is, I mean, man, we live in a world now where Pro Tools has elastic, um, elastic Pro. So Luke most likely would just go in, change the, uh, uh, so I guess I would group this actually. So I would like group the bass and he would go turn on elastic Pro, which is so cool. It's an, I don't know if anybody's hasn't mm -hmm. learned about elastic Pro yet, but you can quantize audio just like you would MIDI. And yeah, give us, can you do a quick one minute demonstration? Yeah, so I'm highlighting the audio track and I've activated Elastic Pro on the tracks and 
let's say he's only playing eighth notes and I'm going to do like a, I don't know, maybe like a 90% strength because we'll see how good Pro Tools can can uh, figure out the warp markers. Um, and I'll just hit apply and it'll auto-generate warp markers across the whole bass. Um, now, would you do that for a full song or would you do it a minute at a time? I, uh, some, it depends on what I'm doing. If it's bass, I'll pretty much do the full song. Um, the only, you can also go into a setting with, uh, uh, where is it? I think it's like option five. It opens elastic properties window and you could toggle the event sensitivity, which would make pro tools generation of these warp markers, not as crazy. Um, but every time I try to dial it back, the the markers that I do want it to generate, it doesn't. So I pretty much just leave it on 100% and then go through painstakingly and zoom in on the, the transients and make sure that Elastic Pro did a good job. Which is, you know, there's very few mistakes that it'll make. Like, it looks pretty clean. Yeah, that looks really good. And this, you didn't align this yet because you only did the drums. Yeah, I I didn't touch the band. I, I left that to Luke, but there was a, a little quick and dirty example of what Luke might do to quantize some of the band. Did you show us, though? Can you play it and then move it, just move something around? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, old solo. Sorry, those are my raw drums. There's bass. So Elastic Pro kind of did a funny thing. Sorry, let me rewind. Who was playing bass on this, do you know? This was uh, David Curran, or, or however you say it. the The elevation guy. Okay, it looks like he does do some 16th, so I should have, I didn't check this before we snapped it, but I should have went back and did 16th notes instead of 8th eight, notes, and I'll remove. Down to go, down go. Yeah, so I wouldn't have run into this if I would have. literally just grab those and move it back and forth yeah wow it's so crazy it's it's like manipulating midi but it's right real audio it's crazy so that's crazy yeah can you show us um s some of the things you did to the vocal yeah so well <clears throat> i feel like Mel melodyne is to me worth a whole um, i'm just gonna revert that bass back uh is worth courses of of information with melodyne but i here's yes. the tuned Dance the darkness sing through the fire praise when it don't make That's sense tuned vocal here i have the raw and i'll just kind of is slap. that is that bleed i'm hearing or is that are there oh i might have had the drum soloed okay to the dark yeah i was like that's a piece of the fire, <laughs> bleed in the vocals when it don't <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, I'll just slap some some generic plugins on this just to make it a little more listenable. So, what I would do? You got the Luke chain right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dance to the darkness, sing to the fire, praise when it don't. So there's the raw vocal for Brandon. What I'll do is I would like to work in Melodyne in. Um, um, Huh, I don't know what this prompt is. We'll ignore Salamony for now. So I like to work in the, the plug-in version of, of Melodyne. I, there's also an ARA integration version of Melodyne into the latest version of Pro Tools. And I haven't been using it just because it hasn't been too stable. 
Oh, goodness. It hasn't been too stable for me. So what I would do for Melodyne is... Oh, my gosh. Is it saying that I need to, like, activate something? Melodyne has not been activated think- on this computer. That is really the strangest thing. I was tuning is vocals. It, is, that, is that the computer that you tune with? Oh, yeah. I was tuning vocals earlier this afternoon <laughs> when I was working before our call. Oh, well, that's such a such a bummer. I wonder what, what's well, the deal we'll, with that. We'll is. have to do... I, I actually agree. I think we could... Next time, we will do a full Melod- Melodyne breakdown of, of how you currently tune i think that would be great that would probably be at least a 30 minute if not longer conversation. yeah but really so we'll quick do that. i would hit this transfer button and then i would commit the track which basically pro tools listens like it commits the whole track worth and since it's uh, hypothetically transferring into melodyne melodyne would pick up the whole length of the audio and that's a really quick way to import it into melodyne um, cause if you're just hitting, if you're clicking that transfer button and hitting the space bar and letting it play through, then you'll have to sit there for 10 minutes and 41 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> so that's one th- kind of cool thing to do, but yeah, sorry about that. That's uh, very strange. That's fine. <laughs> I have more well, vocal I, tuning I, to do later, so I have to figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> I do want to jump over to, um, the, one of your sessions, which th- this one was a little more kind of nuts and bolts of, you know, kind of yeah, uh, yeah. quantizing, tuning, getting stuff ready for Luke. And that's really fascinating. But we def- I think it would be awesome to see what you do with Melodyne for Brandon. So we'll definitely um, have you back and we can look at Melodyne. Dude, that'd, be that'd, be awesome. Be awesome. that'd be awesome. That would be so fun. 